Hey there, this is Professor Hank. Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to give you a brief introduction and example of the selection sort starting out with them. So let's go ahead and begin. All right, so the big idea of selection sort is this, right? So um, we're going to start with the first value in a list of values. And then what we'll do is we'll swap it with the smallest remaining value in the list. Once we'll do that, we'll move to the next number in the list and repeat, right? And we'll keep repeating until there's no more numbers. All right, so let's take a look at an example. Okay, so a simple example here. Um, on the left, you'll see a bunch of numbers and the top numbers here, zero through four, are the subscripts for an array of integers, right? And then the numbers under the line are the list of numbers that we want to sort, right? Nine, seven, four, six, one. We want to sort this thing in ascending order, right? Now over on the right here, we're going to have an area to keep track of the smallest number that we've found so far. Because remember, the big idea is we're going to start with a number, right? In this case, it's going to be nine. And then we're going to search for the smallest remaining number in the list, right? And so the small so far area over here is going to help us keep track of the index or the subscript of the element that has the smallest value we've examined so far. Okay, so let's go ahead and begin. We're gonna start by examining nine. Okay, and then we're gonna assume, you know, that's the number we're gonna start with, so we'll assume that's the smallest number that we've seen so far. So I'll make a note of that over on the right. Now, I'll start examining the rest of the array from left to right okay so i'm going to look at first element here seven is that smaller than the value in the element that is the smallest so far right well yeah because seven is less than nine right so i'm going to update my smallest so far from zero to one right so element one now has the smallest value i've seen so far now let me go look in element two well is that smaller then seven is that smaller than the value in the element that was the smallest I had found so far? Well, yeah, four is less than seven, right? So the new index or subscript right, for the new element, that's the smallest that I've found so far is two. Then I go and I look at the next element over. Is six less than four? No, so don't change anything. Go look in element four and is one less than the value inside of the element with index two? Well, yeah, one's less than four. So the smallest value I've found so far is in index, or is an element with the index of four. Okay, so now once I've made that, once I've done that, now I've examined the rest of the array, so I know which element has the smallest value that's remaining. So that's an element four, so now I'm gonna swap these guys, right? So let me update the list to reflect that. Okay, all right. So now I'm gonna have, move on to the next number, right? So we're gonna start there, and then we're gonna search the rest of the array for the smallest remaining number. Okay, so once we're at element one here, right, that contains seven, well, that's the smallest number we've found so far. All right, so now let's move on to element two. Okay, was well, that less than seven? Yes. So the smallest remaining value that I found so far is that element two. All right, so then we move over to element three. Was well, that less than six? No. Let's then move on to element four. Was well, that less than six? No. So the smallest remaining value in the array is that element two, right? So then I'm gonna swap these guys and let me update the list of numbers reflect that okay now we as humans can tell that the array is sorted but we're not done yet remember computers can only examine two numbers at a time so the algorithm has to finish okay all right so then we move to the next position seven and then we're going to search the rest of the array for the smallest remaining number so when we move to seven smallest the, the index that has the smallest element we've seen that's remaining is in 
or is two, right? The smallest remaining value seven is in index two, or is in element two. So then we take a look at the next value over. Is that less than seven? No. So nothing changes. Move the next value over, nine. Is that smaller than seven? Nope. So nothing changes. So the smallest that we found so far is in element two. So what we end up doing is just swapping seven with itself. That's okay, seven doesn't change positions. Okay, so the order doesn't get messed up. All right, so then we move one more number over. Okay, and the smallest remaining number that we've seen so far is then in element three. Okay, and then we search the rest of the array for the smallest remaining number. So we look inside of here, is nine less than eight? Nope. So done searching the rest of the array. So the smallest remaining number is in element three. So we're just gonna swap eight with itself. And again, that's okay because it doesn't mess up our order. Okay, and we're done, right? Because um, we can stop one number short because if we go here, well, there is no other numbers, right? So that's it. That's the selection sort algorithm in a nutshell. Okay, so let's summarize. In this brief video, we went over uh, the selection sort algorithm. And the big idea with how this works is that you're going to start with the very first number and the list of numbers that you want to sort. Then you find the smallest remaining number in the list. Right? Once you've done that, then go ahead and swap those numbers and then move to the next number over and repeat until there are no remaining numbers. Okay, so that's going to bring this video to a close. If you felt that the video was useful, please consider giving the video a thumbs up. And if you thought that the video sucked, well, then you've got that thumbs down button as an option as well. If you'd like to see more videos, if you're interested in more content from the channel, feel free to hit that subscribe button. And as usual, if you're a student of mine and you have further questions, feel free to drop me an email or to stop by my office hours. Okay, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.